Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fintech Review Annual Summit and looking forward to a great event. Hey, welcome. Yes. Um, perfect. So, yeah. So, um, we're going to start with a few few words about the Israeli Fintech ecosystem, about the tremendous year we have uh, in terms of fundraising for Fintech startups. Uh, 2021 was much better than the beginning of 2020, even though 2020 after the COVID-19 spread had actually kind of recovered, both in terms of investments in fintech startups and both in terms of integrations of fintech startups um, and both markets of Israeli fintech startups around the globe. So a few sentences about uh, fintech Aviv and what we do. So I'm your netzer, then we come with Equitech. Equitech is a fintech consultancy. We consult different financial institutions from one hand and fintech startups from the other hand. Um, we provide a bunch of services. Uh, you can see it on the board, but better and even more interesting than this, we need Fintech Aviv. Fintech Aviv, as you probably know, because you're here, is the Israeli Fintech Association for the last eight years or so. We're hosting different conferences, meetups, and Fintech related uh, events. So uh, we're happy to have you here with us today. Thanks for joining us for this one. This is actually the eighth year of our operation since, since 2014. And um, welcome to the annual summit. A few facts about the Israeli fintech um, ecosystem. So maybe not all of you know, but Israel is ranked second in the world for investment per capita in fintech. First in the world is UK, second is Israel, third is the US market. Actually, fourth is Singapore, which is a similar market to what we have here. Um, we know that 73% out of the investments are coming from foreign investors. Israel is not a capital market, it's a tech market, it's a, it's a tech powerhouse, as we all know, and most of the investments are coming from outside. We have more than $8 billion invested in Israeli fintech since 2019. This is a huge number, and actually almost three, just in the second half of 2021. So that's really crazy numbers, and 2021 was messy. It was really great for Israeli fintech investments and investments in general in high tech. In um, we have more than 850 fintech startups operating in Israel. We have to say, there are some fintech startups operating from outside of Israel for different reasons, lots of reason, reasons, sometimes you know, tax reasons, but these fintechs are led by Israeli, Israeli entrepreneurs. This number does not include these fintechs. If you take a look at fintechs around the world, we'll probably find that are led by Israeli entrepreneurs. We'll probably find 1,500 or so. And of course, 90% of the fintechs in Israel, same as in general high tech, they don't really sell to Israeli clients. They export their solutions. Um, so that's just a quick uh, slide to uh, emphasize what I just said. And uh, we, we actually leaving the, the Nasdaq. This is Israeli companies in general. A few notes about uh, what we did in the Nasdaq and in IPOs. The spark phenomena uh, that was here in 2020, 2021, still continue. But uh, three important facts and very interesting ones. So almost $26 billion were invested in Israeli tech in 2021. That's combined, actually, that's combined the amount of 2019 and 2020. That's even more than these two years together. $4.4 billion were invested in Israeli fintechs. And that's an uplift of 370% from 2020, which is a huge number and a very, very impressive one, uh, very, very impressive one. And 70% out of the, these investments were invested in anti-fraud payments and insurtech companies. So the sub-segments of fintech that are most interesting probably for foreign investors are payments, anti-fraud and insurtech. That's interesting to understand. Um, and this is the last slide I'm gonna show before I hand over the mic to talk, to talk about the latest fintech trends. Take a look at this graph. The left chart, investment in general high tech. Okay? And we can see the total investments in Israeli tech. We had 890 rounds, and the average amount was $330 million for a company. And the right chart is investments in fintech. And take a look at that. We had 104 rounds, much less, and the average round was 43 million dollars. So that's, that means that we have maturity in fintech. The fintech solutions in Israel are in later stages than the general tech. We can understand from this analysis that 
the ready to market products that are distributed from Israel are really massively interesting for the world to examine. And that's how we see that 90% from the fintechs in Israel are exporting real solutions. We have a huge interest from global financial institutions to integrate, to implement, to fintegrate different fintechs that are coming from Israel. So thank you very much for this. I hope you enjoyed it today. And uh, thanks for joining us again. Oh no, if you're gonna clap after the next slide, I have a lot of breaks. So I don't know if you know, but um, um, usually not that excited. But uh, yeah, I guess it's been a while since I've been out here. So, okay, I wanna talk about three main trends and we'll see it throughout the, the, the entire summit. Um, so three main attribute curves 2022 in payments, wealth management, and, and commercial banking. In wealth management, uh, and we'll have several uh, discussions about it later on with the uh, you know, IREX investors and with the uh, E2. So hybrid advice and locking new revenue streams, there's capitalization on the great wealth transfer. And uh, for those of you who don't know, the baby boomers is something that has been a bit neglected. They still generate $2.7 trillion annually. But nevertheless, most of the big applications are focusing on the millennials. Now, this makes some sense because millennials are using uh, technology much better, I'd say, or, or uh, much more than the baby boomers. But still, it's not a market that should be uh, underestimated, and, and especially in wealth management. Um, the ESG impact to the measurement tools, a lot of investors are looking to understand what exactly my money is doing. How is that? How am I impacting uh, the general good? If it's a social impact, if it's a employee-based impact, if it's governmental impact. Um, in terms of, of payment trends, we see a growing phenomenon of interest in, uh, in central bank digital currencies. There are over 100 countries right now who are working on, on different kinds of uh, currencies. We have the, uh, the digital shekel, that is an initiative of the Israeli um, of the Bank of Israel. Now, this raises a lot of questions. Will it be for the end customer? Will it be for bank to bank? How exactly is this going to work? So everything I'm talking about now, we're going to find out later on today. Um, in terms of rise of, a, a, of open ecosystems, there's a lot of um, integration and it really goes together with the economy of scales and conservation. So we see a lot of M&As in, in payments. Um, and in, in general, but definitely in payments, because the market is diverse in a way that every single player has a specific kind of market market share and consolidation makes a lot of sense when providing a very similar value. We just saw a credo I forgot their new name, um, being bought uh, just now. So there are MAs all the time, and this is the main part of what we saw in 2021, and this will continue the shift in 2022. In terms of commercial bank uh, banking trends, and this is uh, this is my favorite topic in fintech commercial banking. In my point of view, it's been most of the application has been focusing on the retail clients, not understanding that the commercial banks, the com sorry, the commercial clients can yield a lot of prospect. There's a lot of opportunities in commercial banking. We'll have a fire start chat with uh, JP Morgan, with, uh, with Z from JP Morgan. We'll talk exactly how they do corporate banking and what it means. Um, but in terms of the rise of the real-time treasury management, adoption of as a service model and utilization of cash, cash flow uh, uh, forecasting. Um, I think I know at least three companies that are just started in the past year that are focused on cash flow management. This is something that um, is, a, is a major obstacle for a lot of companies. Uh, working with everything from hedging on onto how do we manage this? How can I every day make sure that my cash flow with all the currencies is being um, uh, well balanced? And how do I get all the information from all the banks into one consolidation file? So most of the companies are still using uh, Excel sheets where they should uh, use, uh, I'd say, uh, more advanced technologies. And there are companies like like Ogle or AEM. That are really providing such services. So, all these and much more will be talking throughout the day. 